Welcome to the What is DeFi episode of the Web3 Fundamentals course. DeFi is probably one of the most exciting spaces in Web3, so I'm super happy to talk about it in more detail so you can get your head around what is DeFi. So, first question, what is DeFi? Well, it's a decentralized finance. And as always, we won't leave you with that. First, it's, let's look at it by word by word. Decentralized, so meaning there's no central authority. There's no one controlling exactly who can participate and how they can. And finance, well, basically simply anything a bank can do uh, or does, um, that is the world of finance. So if we put those together, DeFi is just doing bank operations uh, with the blockchain to back it up, which provides the decentralization part of the DeFi. So let's compare DeFi to TradFi or traditional finance. So anything that you're kind of currently doing with your bank now. One, in DeFi, you own your money. So you directly are responsible for that. It exists in a wallet or an address on the blockchain. And if you lose that, there really isn't a direct way. So you can ring up, uh, you know, customer service to get your money back or tell us what's in your account. You are directly responsible for that. Uh, where in traditional finance, the bank holds your money. I mean, technically it's yours, but the bank can use those funds for other means, like maybe making investments. And you only need to, whenever you call that need or want that money in cash, uh, that becomes your money. But technically the bank owns the, those digits and you are just kind of assigned those that money uh, when needed. In DeFi, transfers can happen in minutes, where depending on the transfer type, uh, transfers can happen within days, uh, three to five days for typical uh, transfers for most banks. So again, the speed of DeFi uh, is completely unmatched to traditional finance. And DeFi is completely open to anyone. Anyone can create a wallet and, and start a transaction on, on the blockchain. Where in traditional finance, there's a lot of gatekeeping. There's things that need to be approved. Uh, forms need to be filled out. You need to make and verify your personal identity, maybe have a physical address, an income, uh, to have any access to these services. So in that way, DeFi opens up all the world of finance and different operations to certain people that maybe aren't uh, completely, are completely excluded based on certain uh, backgrounds, wherever the country they live in, or whatever sort of income that they make. Uh, DeFi eliminates those barriers. And DeFi is always open. Uh, the blockchain doesn't, never sleeps. It might go down depending on the chain, uh, but it's always open. It doesn't take any holidays or has any opening hours um, that maybe traditional finance or banks have depending on your country. And DeFi is completely transparent. We can see by looking at the blockchain, all of the different transactions uh, that have occurred on the blockchain, where in traditional finance, most of this data is closed um, and you don't have access to it. Uh, so you won't necessarily be able to see who's trading what, uh, the amounts of uh, transactions that happen during the day, um, and things like that. Uh, so DeFi provides a lot of new transparency that, that allows different protocols and different products to be built on top of it. So let's look at our options or the things that we can actually do within DeFi, at least some of them. I mean, we can have an entire course in DeFi uh, alone, but this will give you a sort of a brief overview of what can be done. So we can do transfers, so basically account within account. We'll see what that looks like. Uh, decentralized exchanges, how do we exchange money? Stable coins, what those are and how they work. Lending, actually like we would receive a loan from the bank. And insurance, similarly, how we would insure certain things on the blockchain. So let's get into it with transfers. So these are our account to account transfers, uh, where we could either be working directly with someone's personal wallet, or we can even do things like interact, depending on the blockchain, with a smart contract itself. So we can actually transact with the smart contract and get funds back or get some sort of um, new token, a new uh, coin from that uh, smart contract. So let's look at what an Ethereum transaction looks like or a transfer would look like. So basically you have a, a sender and a receiver on both ends, and the sender obviously starts the transaction. Then they actually need to pay uh, what we call a gas fee, which is essentially like a transaction fee that's tied to the amount of compute that is needed to complete this transaction. Whether it's just a simple transfer 
Ergen interacting with like a smart contract and their operations and functions, they each have a different associated gas cost to them. So let's say the sender sends 250 ETH to that this for this transaction, and there's two different operations that occur. Uh, and each one costs 50 gas and the other costs 30. So again, the amount that actually gets sent to the receiver is 170. Uh, and that gets all computed and you can sort of look at the calculations or estimates of gas using different external services. But if in case that you weren't, didn't send the 250 and you actually ran out of uh, funds to complete the gas for the operations, the fund, the actual transfer would not be complete. And you'll get an error message saying that the transfer ran out of gas. And this is probably one of the most use cases of why transfers aren't completed because the sender has not committed enough funds to complete the gas cost as well as the transfer of the uh, right funds to the sender or to the receiver. Now let's look at decentralized exchanges. So you probably maybe uh, if you travel somehow exchange currencies at, at a certain time or you may have to go to a bank, uh, an ATM or one of those uh, currency exchanges in airplane uh, airports where you take the currency, they show you the price, and you get an exchange back. Well, we can actually do that in a decentralized way where we don't need to involve a bank. And that's actually done through the power of smart contracts. So a smart contract can maintain an order book, which essentially uh, matches the buyers, so people who are depositing funds, and sellers who are also depositing funds in, in, in a different exchange. So a different token, let's say in Ethereum, where I might want to exchange ETH and USDC, which is a stable coin, which we will explain later. Uh, the order book would make a match between the two of us. It would provide a uh, price between them algorithmically and provide the actual uh, settle the, uh, settlement of the transaction between the two of us. Now let's talk about stable coins. If you've ever done any investment already in crypto, you will know that, at, the, at least currently, it's very volatile, meaning it changes over time. Within the day, a price or value of a currency can go from 5 to 10% up or down. So in order for us to become uh, find ways we can replace uh, coins and uh, tokens that, are, uh, that would represent uh, real currency in the real world, is the ability to create stable coins. And this is a tied to uh, a fiat, which is, again, or currencies that are occurring in the real world, like uh, a euro or U.S. dollars. And they're actually uh, less open to, um, <clears throat> while fiat is open to inflation and deflation, we can have crypto tied to those values to provide a more stable asset uh, that has less volatile or less change to them. And this actually allows us to make real world uh, currency exchanges. So some examples of this is DAI and USDC, which is tied closely to uh, the US uh, dollar value by you know maybe give or take one or two cents. And it's assigned algorithmically uh, towards that so that we can continue to adjust uh, the value of that stable coin to uh, the fiat currency and not lose any value there. And again, for com countries that where this is open to, where there's issues around a highly uh, infl inflammatory uh, currency or um, where governments are making decisions that necessarily aren't attuned to keeping the value of the coin. Now we can use currencies like uh, USD, uh, tokens like USDC, which are tied to the US dollar, and we can actually use those for, let's say, real world purchases or ha having getting paid in a less, inf uh, less currency that is open to in inflation by being tied to the US dollar, which may be stronger uh, than the currency that the country that you're operating in. So this all is open to the world of DeFi and through the use of stable coins. We can also do lending. So you know, in, in a bank, you have to walk into a bank, fill out many forms, be approved based on your salary, location, things like this, because um, the bank ultimately holds the decision on when you will receive the loan and you might also need to provide some sort of collateral or an asset so that they know that if you don't pay the loan, uh, you will, they will lose this uh, collateral and the bank will at least recuperate some lost funds there. Well, in the world of DeFi, we don't have banks, but we can have things like automated money makers, which essentially operate 
similar to decentralized exchanges because this is a type of decentralized exchange, but we can have um, these liquidity pools where uh, basically liquidity providers, which could be anyone, would uh, stake funds within these pools. Uh, and then the, the pricing of these tokens are priced algorithmically or assigned by the automated money maker through a smart contract. And traders can buy from the pool so they can trade with them or sell directly to the pool and make any sort of interest uh, rates and returns based on that. And if you are a liquidity provider, based on the growth of the, the pool and how the smart contract assigns them, uh, you can also receive rewards or yield by staking those currencies in there and continuing to earn interest based on how much um, activity is provided in the liquidity pool. So it's not only opening the doors for people to receive loans, but also opening the doors for people to send loans to others by using liquidity pools uh, to stake currency and receiving interest rate, much like the bank makes money now. Some two big examples of this is Aave and Compound. Uh, which you can look at and actually openly see the current rates for uh, different exchanges and to commit uh, funds and stake uh, tokens directly to liquidity pools there. So let's talk about insurance as well, because DeFi covers that. So smart contracts are still a very new concept. Uh, attacks and, and exploits happen uh, quite, it can happen in, in, in a frequency that, um, you know, depending on your level of skill as a smart contract developer, or even the level of skill of the attacker, where funds can be lost or removed from different pools uh, based on uh, exposure or openings in the smart contract. So in, instead of just you know really being disappointed that you've lost funds, you can actually ensure the lost funds or ensure the security of the contract. An example of this is a service called Nexus Mutual. They have an X and NXM token where you can um, exchange for and you can use this token to purchase coverage of a smart contract. You can also use this for governance. So instead of um, being a participant, you can also direct the way that this uh, protocol would work. You can also vote on claims. So people can vote on whether or not a claim should be rewarded uh, based on the attack or the uh, exploit that happened. And you can also stake versus the contract risk. So if you think this is a very safe contract, um, you can stake your funds or your NXM token. And if there aren't any claims uh, made, uh, you would receive some rewards and rates based on that. And that's all again, power to the world of DeFi. Uh, so the, again, this is opening doors to people to operate in a decentralized way uh, without having the use of banks and getting the same kind of financial uptick that the banks have received for many, many of years. So banks is one organization that DeFi and decentralization has conquered. But let's look at next time on how DAOs are bringing us to the whole world of changing the whole world of world of working through the way of working decentralized together with a shared measurements of success. See you in the next one.